Good afternoon. Welcome to another Midweek Live with yours truly, Minister Tanya Brown. I'm so glad that you've taken time out of your afternoon to join me for a word from on high tonight. Good afternoon, Miss Carlotta Reese. Good to have you. Good afternoon. Go ahead and just tell somebody that I am live on the air, Facebook Live, and I have a word for you tonight. Hallelujah. God, God, God is so, God is so good, and God is still working miracles in the lives of His people. Hallelujah! In spite of all that is going on, God is good. Good afternoon, Minister Frazier. Good afternoon, Dr. Boykins. Good afternoon, Miss Yancey. Congratulations on your new assignment. Praise God. Good afternoon, Miss Wilson. Good afternoon, Miss Harris. Miss Renfro. Ms. Vera Frazier, good afternoon. Mrs. Vaughn Whitfield, good afternoon. Coach Aisha Whitfield, Pastor Thomas Brown, good afternoon. Praise God. <laughs> yep, I do. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There is a word tonight. Hallelujah. And I hope that all is well wherever you are. I hope that all is well with you. And even if all does not seem well or all does not appear well, wherever you are, just go ahead and claim all is well. Because we're believing that all is well in spite of what we see, in spite of what we feel, in spite of everything that is happening all around us. Good afternoon, Miss Bernice Hutchison, Miss Isella Wilson. Praise God. The word tonight comes from Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel. Good afternoon, Miss Riggins. It comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter number 5, verses 36 through 38. Miss Reese, Miss Annie Reese, yes, all is well. Yes, hallelujah. You just claim that all is well. Yes, somebody else needs to go ahead and just... Somebody else just needs to go ahead and claim all is well. Good afternoon, Miss Terrell Jones. All is well. My God, my God, my God. We we see that the COVID-19 numbers are, are once again on the rise, but we still claim that all is well. And we thank God that we are yet among the living. Hallelujah and glory to God. Good afternoon, Miss Marnette Wilson. Luke chapter 5 verses 36 through 38. Miss Wilburn, it reads like this, and he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old, Miss Mary Thomas, if otherwise then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old and no man putteth new wine into old bottles else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottles shall perish but new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved I'll read that again. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh the rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are Preserve. Mrs. Margaret Jackson, tonight I want to teach from the subject out with the old, in with the new. That's right, Miss Marita Frazier, um, Aunt Kathy, out with the old and in with the new. That's 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 my topic tonight from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 36 through 38. Out with the old, in with the new. Yes, yes. And my challenge to you, my challenge to all of you is to don't get stuck in the past, stay current. Don't get stuck in the past, but stay current. I feel safe in saying 
that most of us don't like change. Oftentimes we like the results. We like the results of the change, but we don't like change itself because change is often uncomfortable. It often requires flexibility, and many times it disrupts what is currently going on, and it often causes us to think differently and to respond differently, Brother Taz. Most of us, most of us feel this way as it relates to change. One thing, my brothers and my sisters, that this pandemic has taught all of us is that if we are going to survive, then we must embrace change. That's right. If we're going to survive, we must embrace change. And I challenge you tonight, don't get stuck in the past and in transition. Keep moving forward. We must learn to embrace change, Miss Maddox, because change is occurring all of the time. All of us, I feel safe in saying, in some point, in some way or another, we have had to change something since this pandemic started. We have had to change the way in which we go out. We, have, we can no longer go out barefaced. When we go into stores, our faces must be covered. We have had to change the way that we have our church services. Most of us have in some way, form, or fashion are working with virtual services. We have had to change so many ways. We have had to change the way that we do business. Many businesses no longer accept cash. Many businesses don't no longer accept checks. You have to purchase things by way of a credit card. We have had to change whether we like it or not. We have had to change. All of us have had to make some changes, some changes. We're talking about making some changes out with the old and in with the new. So don't get stuck in the past and in transition, but keep moving forward. Out with the old, in with the new. The text before us tonight happens after Jesus had healed the paralytic. You remember the paralyzed man who was brought in through the rooftop and, and there was no room for him on the inside. So they took the man on top of the roof and they began to remove some of the tiles and they brought the paralytic down through the roof. This, this, this verse, the, these verses that we're working with tonight, they occur after that. It occurs after Jesus had called Levi into the ministry. And let me give you just a little bit of history. Levi was a publican. Levi was a publican. A publican was a tax collector of the day. A publican who was a tax, collect, ta tax collector of the day was considered a sinner. Why was he considered a, a sinner? I'm glad you asked. He was considered a sinner because the Roman government hired these tax collectors to do their work. They hired them to go out and receive taxes and to take taxes from the people. But in order for the publicans to get paid, they overtaxed the people. In other words, they overburdened the people with taxes so that they could get their cut out before they turned the other money in to the government. So these people were looked down upon. Nobody wanted to see the tax collector come. Nobody wanted to see the publican come because they knew that they were going to have to pay some astronomical price as it related to their taxes. So this, this text that is before us happens after Jesus had called Levi into the ministry. And on this particular occasion, Jesus is sitting down at the house of Levi. He is feasting with Levi. And, and, the, and the religious leaders of the day considered it feasting with a sinner. So that's where we are. He is having dinner at Levi's house. When the religious leaders come along and they question him, they begin to question him. And you do remember that throughout the New Testament, the religious leaders were always questioning Jesus. They always found fault in everything that he did. Glory to God. So here he is having dinner at this 
quote, sinner's house. And the religious leaders, they come along and they want to know why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples? Why are your disciples always eating instead of fasting and praying? They wanted to know why Jesus' disciples were not doing as the other disciples had done. And so Jesus uses this as an opportunity to caution us. That's point number one. He uses this as, a, as an opportunity to caution us about trying to reconcile old ways with new ways. Jesus cautions us about mi mixing old ways with new ways. Sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, you cannot mix old stuff with new stuff and expect a positive outcome. Sometimes, Deacon Brown, you cannot mix the old with the new and expect it to come out favorably. The religious leaders did not recognize that Jesus was indeed the Christ. Therefore, they were constantly my brothers and my sisters chastising him for not being an Old Testament Juda Judaism teacher. They wanted him to teach the law the way that they taught the law. They failed to understand that he was a fulfillment of the law. Don't miss that, Miss Preston. They didn't understand that some things, some of the old things were passing away and Jesus was instituting the new. Don't you miss that either. During this time, some of their old things were passing away and Jesus was instituting the new. Glory to God. So he cautions them about mixing old things with the new things. As Jesus often did, he uses a parable to to teach them a principle. And you do know what a parable is. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He uses this parable to teach them a principle. He, here is the parable. Verse 36b, it says, no man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old. 37b, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Simply put, you're joining stuff together that shouldn't be put together. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 16 says, what know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two saith he shall, shall be one flesh. In other words, he's saying, he's saying that you're joining things that should not be joined. That's the caution. That's the caution here. Life lessons. Stop hooking up with stuff because it looks good. Stop hooking up with things because it smells good, because they taste good, and because it feels good. Everything that is good to you is not necessarily good for you. Ask yourself, ask yourself the question, is my allegiance with this person or with this group drawing me to God or is it drawing me away from God? Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Don't miss this. Everything that looks similar does not need to be mixed with other stuff. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Sugar, white sugar, and white salt look similar. But how many people know and understand that you cannot put your sugar on your popcorn and put your salt in your tea? Oh my God. You see, some things, everything that looks similar does not need to be mixed with other stuff because mixing the two can cause a disconnection, it can cause a disruption, and it can cause a separation. During the times when Jesus walked among the earth, old cloth was not attached to new cloth. You see, they didn't have all of these new processes by which they were able to make clothing. So they didn't dare take an old garment, a patch from an old garment, and sew it onto a new garment. Because what would happen was be that the old garment, which was worn and the material had softened and it had gone through much wear and tear, when it would attach to the new 
garment. During the washing process, the garment would begin to come apart. And so when the gar a garment comes apart, the garment would no longer be useless. That's what this means. That's what it means when he says you don't attach the new garment with the old garment. Because when you attach it, it's going to eventually cause a disconnection. It's going to eventually cause a separation. And it's going to cause a disruption with you if you try to wear that garment when it is pulling apart. During these times, also, when they would make wine, you see, they would put the unfermented juice or the grape juice or whatever fruit juice it was, they would put it inside a new wine skin. And at first it would be fine, nothing would happen. But after a while, when the fermentation process occurred, the wine skin would begin to expand. And once it began to expand and hold this new wine, it was only good for that batch of wine. So then once you remove the wine from the wine skin, you wouldn't put fresh wine into that old wine skin because at first it might be fine. But once it begins to ferment, because that wine bag or that wine bottle or that wine skin had been used, it would not be able to stretch anymore because it would have already been stretched during the fermentation process. Therefore, if you put the new wine into the old wine skin, it would eventually burst. And once again, you would have a disconnection, you would have a disruption and a separation. So I caution you tonight to let go of your old way of thinking and to embrace the new. Out with the old, in with the new. It's time to let go of some misconceptions and some preconceived ideas that we have about people. You see, some people have shown you who they really are as opposed to who you thought they were. It's time to let them go. You've got to stop holding on to relationships that are not good for you. Take out the old. Put in the new, Miss Hutchison. You can't receive the new until you get rid of the old. Some of us have been looking at some people we ought to be looking over, and some of us are looking over some people we ought to be looking at. Out with the old and in with the the new. We are living in a time and a season where there has been a mass uncovering. People have been far way too long pretending to be for us when they are actually against us. They have been hiding behind a veil of hypocrisy, telling us that they are for life and morality while separating mothers from children and cutting out social services designed to help the needy in order to put money in the pockets of the greedy. But I heard the psalmist say in verse, in chapter 41, verse one, blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. Proverbs 14 and 21 says, the sinner despises his neighbor, but he that hath mercy on the poor is blessed. Out with the old, in with the new. Not only, my brothers and my sisters, do we see the caution, but we also see the repercussions of trying to mix stuff that shouldn't be mixed. It causes a disconnection, it causes a disruption, and it causes a separation. It might look all right at first, at glance. It may seem all right at first glance, but Proverbs 14 and 12 said, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the way ways of death. Here it is, verse 36, Luke chapter 5, 36 C. It says, these are the repercussions. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent. In other words, when the, when the cloth is joined after it has been washed, it makes a tear. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. At that point, they no longer match. So it looks like there are mixed, the, the garments are mixed match. 37C. 
else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottles shall perish. In other words, when the pressure from fermentation causes the skin to expand, the bottle bursts and the wine spills. When the new wine is placed in the old vessel, it would be fine at first. Oh my God, some, some, some things in your life, they seem fine at first, but in time, in time, in time, it shows exactly what it is. You will see it for what it is. But when the fermentation process begins, when the pressure is on, the old vessel would not be able to handle the process causing it to burst. There are people out there who look at you and what God has blessed you with. They desire what you have and they even covet what you have. But if they have to go through what you have to go through, my God, my God, they wouldn't be able to handle the fermentation process. They cannot handle the pressure. They see your glory, my God, but they don't want to endure your story. And whenever we we ignore God's warnings. We are bound to suffer consequences out with the old, in with the new. Just like the bottle and the cloth, we are bound to experience a disconnection, a disruption, and a separation. I don't know about you, but I don't want my fellowship from God to be disconnected, disrupted, or separated. Because without him, Minister Finley, Without him, I glory to God, glory to God. Oh my God. Without God, I can do nothing. And God has lifted the blinders from our eyes, Miss Minnie Allen, and caused many of us during this season to see things as they are and not be distracted by a facade that mimics righteousness. If it kills, if it steals, if it destroys, it is not of God. If it kills your joy, it is not of of God. If it steals your peace, it is not of God. If it destroys your race, it is not of God. God has sent us warning after warning after warning that many of those who say they are for us, oh my God, are making and voting on policies that are against us. Did you hear that? Stop ignoring the warning. Stop being fooled by the lies of the enemy. Somebody said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Out with the old, in with the new. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, Miss Renfro saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Take out the old so he can put in the new. God wants to bless you with new things, Sister Mac Jane, but you are too busy holding on to old things. God wants to bless you with the right one, but the wrong one is always tagging alone. In order to receive the right relationship, you must first get out of the wrong relationship. In order to hear and receive the right word from God, God, you've got to first ignore and stop receiving the wrong word. If you want to eat the right foods, foods that promote life instead of foods that promote disease, death, and sickness, you've got to first stop eating the wrong foods. I can assure you that when you put in enough of the right foods, you won't have enough room for the wrong foods. If you heed the caution and don't ignore the warnings, God will spare you from disconnection, disruption, and separation. That's the conclusion, point number three, that Jesus gives them. Listen to the conclusion, verse 38. But new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved. Oh my God. Do you want to be preserved? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to experience the joy of the Lord? I don't know about you, but I don't want to experience the disruptions, the separations and the disconnections in my life. I want to stay hooked up with Jesus. I want to stay connected to God. So it says, but new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved. Do you want to be preserved out with the old and in with the new? In other words, the new information, the new knowledge, the new revelation that you are receiving 
the new way of doing things is designed to preserve you because God is doing a new thing. Did you hear that, Miss Miss Marnette Wilson? God is doing a new thing. Yes, I want to stay hooked up with Jesus. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Glory to God, Miss Teresa Thomas, and rivers in the desert. Don't get stuck in the past. Stay current. Out with the old and in with the new. The conclusion, Jesus did not come to reform the religious system of that day. He was a fulfillment of that system. His way of doing things did not mix with the old way of doing things. Instead of ostracizing sinners, Jesus fellowship with sinners. Jesus was interested in attracting sinners, not sending them away, not running them away. Luke chapter 5 verse 31 says, and Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. He could not attract sinners if he treated them the way the religious leaders wanted him to treat them. Jesus didn't judge the sinners. Jesus gave them grace and mercy. And he's right now, right now, he's waiting to give you grace and mercy. Just like he did it then, he will do it again. Luke chapter 5 verse 32 says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He could not reach the sinner with judgment. He reached the sinner with grace and with mercy. Likewise, likewise, my brothers and my sisters, you cannot get what God has prepared, what, what God has prepared for you while you're holding on to junk. Jesus reminds us to stay current, stay current, out with the old, in with the new. God is moving many of us into some uncharted waters, uncharted territories. We are having to let go of so many old ways and so many old ideas. And if we're going to survive, we're going to have to embrace the new technology, embrace the new ways by which we must worship and embrace the new ways on how to purchase items. There are many things that we have to embrace or else we will be left behind. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be left behind. Joshua chapter 3 verse 4 reminds us, for ye have not passed this way before. You're going into some uncharted territories. Some of you, my brothers and my sisters, you want God's best, but you have settled for less. You've got to get rid of the less and trust him for the best. A lot of people are trying to force stuff that shouldn't be forced. Oh my God out with the old, in with the new. The songwriter said, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Sometimes things, my brothers and my sisters, just don't fit. Sometimes people are staying in places that they have outgrown. Out with the old, in with the new. That's the word for tonight. We have looked at Luke chapter 5, verses 36 through 38. We looked at the caution, we looked at the repercussions, and we looked at Jesus' conclusion. That's the word of God. Some of the things that you've been carrying, you've got to let them go. Some of the old mindsets that you had about things, about situations, about people, you've got to leave them in the past because we are moving in a place we've not moved into before. We're going in a direction that we have not gone before. We are beginning to see some things that we've never seen before. And we must trust God that he is going to work things out for our good. We know that he is able to do it because the word says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Out with the old, in with the new. Let's go to God in prayer, Miss Vera Frazier, Miss Mary Thomas, Miss Minnie 
Alan. Yes, we've got to let it go. That's right, Mary Thomas. We've got to let it go. Absolutely, Miss Hutchinson. We've got to leave it in the past. Glory to God. Don't get left in the past. Leave it in the past. Glory to God. Don't you get left in the past. Leave it in the past. Glory to God. As long as there's breath in your body, you keep moving forward. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you tonight, Lord. We come to magnify your holy and magnificent name. We come to reverence you because you are the most high God. We come to glorify you, God. Lord God, we love you in the name of Jesus. Father God, we cast all of our sins, Lord, down, Lord. We ask that you will forgive us, Lord, for every sin in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you will create in us a clean heart, God, that you will teach us, God, how to walk and talk and be mere reflections of you. Now, God, we ask that you put an extra hedge of protection around our homes, God, around our bodies, Lord, around our places of worship, God, our places that we work in the name of Jesus. We ask, God, that you will protect our children, God, that you will bless them in their coming and that you will bless them in their going. No weapon that is formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we cancel the assignment of the enemy. We speak, speak cancellation to his assignment in the name of Jesus, Lord. The enemy will not and cannot do the thing that he has purposed to do in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we love you, God, because you first loved us. We love you, God, because we know that you are an able God. We thank you for your grace, God. We thank you for your mercy in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we just bless your holy name. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you surround us with peace, God, the kind of peace that is not of this world, peace that surpasses all man's understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask God that you restore our souls, restore them like only you can. Lord God, we ask that you restore imbalances in our bodies in the name of Jesus, imbalances caused by sickness, imbalances caused by disease and inflammation. We ask that you restore balance in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we speak to sick bodies and we speak to wellness into sick bodies in the name of Jesus. We speak to sick minds and we speak wellness to sick minds in the name of Jesus. Lord God, give us the mind to walk like you, Lord. Give us the mind, God, to do what you you said in your word that we should be doing. Lord God, we bless your name tonight. Lord, we bless your name from on high, God. We will look unto the hill, hills, God, because you are the source of our help, God. We thank you for the joy, God, the joy of our salvation. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now, God, that you allow us, God, to have strength to hold on, God, until our change comes. In Jesus' name. Lord God, we give you all of the glory tonight. We praise your everlasting name tonight. We magnify your name tonight. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everyone said, amen and glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you for joining me, Miss Enette Rees, Miss Annie Rees, Miss Mary Thomas. Thanks for joining me, Minister Frazier. Thanks for joining me. Ms. Tamara Yancey, thank you for joining me. Ms. Dixon, Ms. Minnie Allen, I pray that all is well. Dr. Boykins, in the name of Jesus, yes, yes, glory to God. Um, I want to remind you that Pastor Brown will come again tomorrow night with another word from on high. Don't you dare miss it. Stay tuned tomorrow, same time, for a word from on high. And those of you who uh, worship with us, who, who uh, fellowship with us at MTV, remember that the church anniversary is coming up. Glory to God. And you can still make your donations um, toward the church anniversary. And I'm sure Ms. Janie Brown will have that information up on the screen very soon. I want to remind everybody to continue to be safe. Continue, Ms. Melissa Sanford. Please continue. When you go out to wear your mask, stay protected. 
this pandemic is not over. I know you're like most of us. You're tired uh, of, of the mass. You're tired of all of these things, but we must remain diligent. We must remain diligent. When we go out, we must remain protected. We must stay covered. We must be mindful of, of standing too close to others, of, of, of being too close to people who are not in our homes, who do not live with us. This pandemic is not over. Please remain protected. Now, we trust God, but we're going to do what we have to do and trust him to do the rest. Glory to God. Thanks again for joining me, Miss Ann Hutchison, uh, Miss Marnette Wilson. Glory to God. Share this message with somebody. If you didn't quite get it all, go back and hear it. Out with the old, in with the new. And I'll see you again on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. You have a blessed, awesome week. Keep walking with God and God will walk with you.